the Nikon Nikkor 150mm SW lens. Could this be the most desirable of all the large format extreme wide angle lenses that covers 8x10 film? I invite you to take a closer look with me at not only the specifications of this lens, but also some of my sample images of its practical application in the field. It is important to note that I am not sponsored by Nikon or the Nidac Copal Corporation. I purchased this lens with my own money off of the used market. All of the opinions expressed in this video are my own thoughts and are based upon my own experiences with using this lens. In order to understand some of the manufacturer's specifications of this lens, it's important to briefly review some optical properties. Don't worry, I'll make this as painless as possible. A lens projects a cone of light onto the film plane and the shape of that defined cone is characterized in degrees. This is what is referred to as the field angle, also known as the angle of coverage. The greater the angle of coverage, the larger the diameter of the cone of light projected onto the film plane. It is important to note that this is often confused with angle of view, which is the cone of light in front of the lens. To understand if a lens can be used with a particular size of sheet film, we are only concerned with the cone of light being projected onto the film plane. That's our focus. I guess pun intended here. <laughs> More importantly is the diameter of the cone of light projected onto the film. That diameter is what is referred to as the circle of good definition or more simply put, the image circle. For the 150mm SW lens, Nikon reports that the projected cone of light or angle of coverage is 106 degrees, which produces a diameter of 400mm at f22. It is important to note that manufacturers use F16 or F22 focused at infinity to report the specifications on their lenses because this is typically the aperture where the maximum image circle is achieved. So what? Why should I care about these big fancy physics words and numbers? How do we use this information on a practical level? That's the important part. Well, we know that a piece of 8x10 film measures approximately 323 millimeters in diameter from corner to corner. Keep in mind that the film holder covers some of the edges of the film so the surface area available for exposure is slightly less than 323 millimeters. Since the 150 millimeter SW lens projects an image circle that is 400 millimeters in diameter, then we know that the piece of 8x10 film will receive plenty of the projected image cone. In other words, there won't be any areas of the film that don't get exposed to light. Realistically, 8x10 film requires that a lens project an image circle that covers an area of more than 323 millimeters. This is especially true if you want to apply any movements to your image. Imagine applying rise or fall to your composition and only having an image circle of 312 millimeters at f22, as is in the case of the Nikon Nikkor 120mm SW lens. What would happen? you would end up with an area on the film that was unexposed because the movement extended beyond the image circle. While Nikon reports that the 120mm lens can adequately cover 8x10, you wouldn't be able to apply any movements to your composition. It is noteworthy that modern lenses generally will produce sharp and clean images to the edges of the projected image circle and are typically designed to cut off the image circle before any chromatic aberrations begin to occur. Older lenses don't have this, so the image gets soft and fuzzy with swirls around the edges of the image circle. You may have seen this effect in older photographs and possibly even seek lenses that have this look. Some photographers purposefully use these fall off effects in their images to add interest and character. It's all personal preference. I personally like clean images across the entire piece of film. The take home message is that the Nikon Nikkor 150mm SW lens has plenty of coverage for movements on 8x10 and of course smaller formats. Not that I would recommend this lens for anything smaller because it's ridiculously huge, heavy and expensive for a used product. If you are not aware, the size of the film and focal length are going to affect the angle of view. In other words, the Nikon Nikkor 150mm SW lens is equivalent in the angle of view to about a 21mm lens in the 35mm format. So carrying around this lens to cover formats smaller than 8x10 just doesn't make a lot of sense in my humble opinion and certainly wouldn't give you that extreme wide angle photography. 
Okay, so now that we've beaten into the ground that the Nikon Nikkor 150mm SW lens covers the 8x10 format, let's talk about some of the practical features of this beautiful piece of glass. In my humble opinion, the best aspect about this lens is that you do not need a sensor ND filter because there is mostly even illumination from the center of the lens out to the edges. Any vignette present is barely noticeable and gives a very pleasing and subtle effect to the images. To me, not having to use a center ND filter is a huge benefit so I don't have to carry around an extra piece of gear or have to adjust my metered exposure so the image turns out correctly. It is just less to think about in the field and reduces any contribution to my love-frustration relationship with large format. If you want to hear more about my relationship with large format, I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Did I mention that the center ND filters are difficult to find for your specific lens? And when you do find them, they cost just about as much as a decent large format lens. It's ridiculous the amount of money you could spend on a piece of partially shaded transparent glass and metal. For me, I'd rather not complicate my workflow with all of that. It is simply unnecessary. Let's take a look at the anatomy of this lens, which is not all that different from other modern large format lenses. There are basically four parts to make a lens fully functional and ready to use on your camera. We have the rear lens element and the front lens element that attach to the shutter. There are several different manufacturers of shutters, but the most commonly used are made by Copal. They are available in three sizes and the focal length determines which shutter size is appropriate for the lens. In this case, the Nikon Nikkor 150mm SW lens is coupled with a Copal No. 1 shutter, which needs a 41.6mm hole to properly secure the lens to the lens board. The aperture ranges from f8 to f64, and the shutter speeds top out at 1 400th of a second. It also has an X-contact sync socket that allows for connecting the shutter to studio strobes. Since these shutters use leaf style shutters, they are capable of syncing modern studio strobes to all speeds, which is also a nice feature. If you want to learn how to connect your studio strobes to your large format lenses, I'll leave a link to my video in the description that explains how to do that. Let's assemble this lens outfit. The first thing I like to do is open the press focus lever, also called the preview button. Then I slide the aperture to the largest possible setting to minimize the risk of coming into contact with these very fragile blades. I then attach the shutter to my Cinar lens board by threading the retaining ring on the back side that faces the film plane. I use this adjustable spanner wrench to lightly tighten the retaining ring. There's no need to over tighten. Next, I'll attach the rear lens element to the shutter. I like to start by threading counterclockwise to reduce the risk of cross threading, followed by a clockwise direction. I finish the assembly by threading the front lens element in the same manner. What a wonderful, ridiculously huge lens that is ready for action. This is unequivocally my favorite lens to use when it comes to shooting landscape photography in the 8x10 size. However, it does come with some minor drawbacks. The first of which is that the front standard opening needs to be larger than the massive diameter of the rear element. That's about 3.9 inches of hefty glass. So for my large format cameras, I can only use the Cinar lens board, which is five and a half by five and a half inches. Have you seen the size of this thing? That takes a valuable space in my backpack. The eight elements in eight groups that give this glass the ability to provide mostly even illumination across the entire image circle increases the size and weight. Did I mention that this lens is ridiculously huge and heavy? Three pounds of massive, awesomeness. Additionally, the front thread is 95 millimeters, which also is ridiculously huge. Unfortunately, using anything but a single function screw-on filter will result in mechanical vignette of the image. I initially didn't realize that my Lee filter holder kit on this lens was causing vignette problems. I just thought it was me pushing my movements too far or that the bellows were sagging. It turns out if you want to stack filters or use the Lee filter holder kit, you have to purchase a specially made filter holder that pushes onto the lens barrel and uses a compression ring to secure it in place. This moves the filters closer to the lens and avoids any mechanical vignette. That was a lesson learned the hard way with many pieces of film needing a sizable crop. 
Another aspect of this lens that makes it more challenging to use is the aperture range of f8 to f64. In particular, I am not fond of the maximum f8 aperture on account that it just makes composing an image on the ground glass so much more difficult compared with other larger aperture lenses that are available. Especially in the morning, just before the sun is up, and when you're not fully awake. That's a great recipe for missed focus. The one last negative that I'll mention is the price. For reference, in B&H's source book from 1998, the Nikon Nikkor 150mm SW lens retailed new for $2,199.95. That's $4,140.04 in 2024 dollars. That's a pricey lens even in today's market. I purchased my copy of this lens in April of 2016 from another photographer for $1,500 and he included a yellow screw-on filter. Comparatively, that was a bargain. Today, this lens is fetching upwards of $2,500 to $3,000 used, making it still one of the priciest used large format lenses you can get today. Consider yourself fortunate if you already own one of these ridiculously huge gems. If this particular lens doesn't strike your fancy, there are a number of alternatives that you may wish to consider that will cover 8x10. Here are some of the other viable options to help you in your search for an extreme ultra-wide angle lens in the 150 to 165 millimeter focal length. It is important to note that I have never used any of these lenses before, and therefore I can't make any useful comments about them other than they will most likely require a center ND filter. In case you were wondering, there are a handful of lenses in the 110 to 120 millimeter range that are sometimes used with the 8x10 format. However, they have image circles that barely cover, if at all, the entire piece of 8x10 film and subsequently will result in corners with vignette. Movements are basically out of the question with these lenses and most likely will require a center ND filter, except for the Nikon SW. Again, I have no experience using any of these lenses, so this is just for informational purposes. I think it's worthwhile mentioning that modern large format lenses were designed specifically for applications that required attention to the finest detail with the best sharpness, contrast, and color reproduction available to meet the demands of discerning clients. Large format photography was a medium that wasn't within the budget for most people. It was, and perhaps still is, a unique type of photography. The combination of the large piece of film with the modern large format lens makes for images that are the very best that you can get on film. So the bottom line is that worrying about the brand you choose or if a lens is sharp enough is far less important than matching your focal length to your format and what angle of view you prefer to achieve the results you're after. Despite some of these aforementioned quirks of the Nikon Nikkor 150mm SW lens, I couldn't imagine my large format kit without this piece of awesome gear. This lens is capable of making images that are sharp with beautiful contrast and vibrant colors. It provides me with the ability to enjoy extreme wide angle photography on 8x10 film. It's a lens that has been absolutely essential to me in creating some of my favorite images. Here are some examples of my work taken with this lens in the field. Are you considering the purchase of the Nikon Nikkor 150mm SW lens or already own it? Leave me a comment below on why you like this lens. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. As always, thanks for watching.